So at this point, we're done with static pages, and we're going to start with slightly dynamic pages. In this case, what we're going to do is create a different title for each page. You'll note that every one of these pages is, just has sample app as the title that comes from uh, generating the controller. But we want them to change on a per page basis, so home, contact, and about. And as usual, throughout the rest of this tutorial, we're going to write our test first, so let's do that. So here's the pages controller spec. And let's start with the home page. Let's say, let's, we're going to create a new example here. So in text made, I type it tab. And I'm going to say it should have the right title. So as in the previous example, I'm going to say get home. And then I'm going to say response dot should. Now, this is a way to test the HTML code. I'm going to use a method called have selector. This used to be called have tag, which I preferred. Um, they've changed things up on me for the new version of our spec. But you can think of this as having a particular tag. So I'm going to say, in this case, what kind of tag we want, which is title. And then have selector takes the content. And we're going to see it's going to be pretty long. So let's do this content. So don't worry about the syntax here. We're going to be covering a lot of Ruby syntax in the next lesson. But here I'm going to say the content is Ruby, oops, Ruby on Rails tutorial. This is the title I want. Sample app. And then I'm going to have a vertical uh, bar, also called a pipe character, and home. So let's just uh, let's do this. I don't like this code formatting at all, and uh, we'll fix it later on. So if this looks ugly to you, good, because this looks ugly to me. All right, let's save that, and uh, Autotest should run the test suite. And it says one of four examples failed. So that's good, because it should fail. Oops, now we've gotten, now we've gotten to, uh, to red. And now we can look at the application code. And we can look at the, uh, let's take a look at it, app, views, pages, home. So let's, let's add some HTML structure here. Uh, let's put in a doc type. And HTML tag. And a head. The title. And we know what we want the title to be. Oops. And then there's a body. Body. Okay, let's rerun our, our spec here. Space backspace. Now, one of four examples failed. Now, why did that fail? We, we actually put in our title. The answer is related to uh, the files we removed earlier. We removed the, uh, the, the view specs and the helper specs. In this case, th since there are no view specs, we're going to be testing our views in the controller. And there's a, a special command you need in order to get this controller to or this controller spec to render the views. So it does not render the views by default. You can hit actions, but it doesn't actually render the HTML. So you can arrange for that to happen by typing render views. Oops. And there we go. Now we're to green. So it actually indicates that we have the uh, the right title. Um, and of course that there are analogous tests for the other uh, pages. Just copy these guys. get about, get contact, we can save this, and we should be at red. And 
And before we move on, I'm, I'm going to actually change this up to say what I w actually wanted to say, which is um, say sample app. And the paragraph, I'm going to have it say this is the home page for the, now I'm going to put an anchor tag. This is a, to make a link with the URL href, which is hypertext reference. Tutorial.org, the on Rails tutorial, closing tag, and then sample application. We want something similar for the other pages, so let's take a look at about, at, or contact and about. I'm going to copy and paste these guys. And the content here, I'm just going to paste this in from the tutorial. Contact is contact Ruby on Rails tutorial about the sample app at the feedback page. And then the about page, do something similar. And I forgot to change the H1 on the contact page. This is contact and say about us. Okay, so I have my TextMate configured so that if I do um, a command tab, it will save all of these guys. If, as, as, when it loses focus, it will save them. So I can uh, uh, change the pages controller spec and now do a command tab, and it should r should run all the tests. Ah, so this isn't too so. So this is great. We actually ran into something. I it, this is an error from my copying and pasting. I forgot to change the actual title. So the test has already saved us something. This is contact, and this is about. This is why you have tests. Now let's run them. And there we go. Now we're green. Whew. Excellent. So at this point, it's always a good sanity check just to look at the actual page. Let's look at pages about. So this looks pretty good. About us. It's got the, the link. It's got this here. But notice the title. It says sample app. <laughs> so this just goes to show that test suites are not all powerful. They don't catch everything. And in this case, there's something funky going on on this page. And uh, we can figure out by looking at the source what it is. So if you look at the page source, here's, here's the title down here. It certainly seems to have the right title. But you can see up here that the title tag actually appears twice. So this is not a well-formed um, well document. Oh, I just noticed I have a, a, an error in my doc type. Let me go fix that. Speaking of well-formed documents, all right. So this, this was this was good up here, but all of this. Look at this. The title page, or the title of the page, is wrong uh, up here. And the way the web browser works is it renders the first title tag at C. So what's going on here is that there's what's called a layout file, which we'll be learning about momentarily. But the the Rails generator made one for us. You can take a look at it. So at this point, I actually want to get rid of this file. Um, it's, it's actually doing more harm than good right now. It's just confusing us. So let's get rid of it. Now, we're actually going to be adding this file back in. So I'm not going to remove it from the repository. I'm just going to remove it uh, from the file system right now, and then we'll put it back in. So rm app views layouts, and then application.html.erb. As we'll see, that, that uh, file name is special. It's, uh, this is the default layout. But we're going to get rid of it for now. And now we can take a look at the page again. And there we go. Now you can see that the title is right. Just to double check, it never hurts to rerun the test suite. Good, we're still green. All right, so with, with that uh, little, uh, little detail, we now have working static pages with the proper titles. One of the things you might have noticed, though, is that there's quite a bit of duplication in the views. So if you look, if you look here, these views are are almost identical, not quite except for the body. Almost identical. All that changes is the title from one page to the next in terms of the, the overall structure, apart from what's inside the body tag. So our next step is to eliminate that duplication, and uh, and this will be our our first 
real experience of having a controller configured so that um, the view will render properly based on variables defined in the controller. We saw a little bit of this in the demo app, but this is the first time we will have done it ourselves. This is also our first example of refactoring. What we're going to do here is not change anything external. The web pages will be exactly the same. What we'll, we're going to be changing is the code. And so in this case, it'll be really nice to have a test suite running that will uh, give us some assurances that we're not actually breaking anything in our application. So somewhat paradoxically, our first step in eliminating the duplication here is to add a little bit more. Uh, what we're going to do is make this title exactly the same and not almost exactly the same from page to page. And the way we're going to do that is with a little bit of embedded Ruby. So let's take a look at the pages controller. I'm going to define a variable called at title and say that this is equal to home. And here I'm going to insert some uh, some dynamic content with the uh, uh, with the syntax for embedded Ruby, which is open angle bracket percent equals and then percent close angle bracket. So I saw the textmate was a little bit too smart for our own good here, and it actually uh, created the the closing tags. And in this case, I'm going to put at title right here in our template. So before this was just static HTML. That's why they were still static pages. There was nothing but static HTML. Now we've added a little bit of dynamic content. And so what this does here with the syntax is it actually just inserts the contents of this variable right here in the template. So if you look at the pages controller, we've defined this at title to be the string home. And so that's what should appear here. So we can actually save these two. Let's, let's, uh, let's save these guys. And let's see if it still passes. It does. So that means we haven't changed the title. Um, we've just done it in a, in a more clever way. So now that we've done this, we can actually use exactly the same code. Let's do this. Let's copy it. Paste it in. In the, in the contact and the about templates. And then we can go to the pages controller and define variable uh, versions of at title for, for these two cases. So as before, let's click over here and watch our test suite run again. And there it goes. It's still passing. So at this point, all three of these templates are exactly the same in terms of everything other than the body tag. So it would be really nice to be able to hoist all of this common content up into some sort of application layout. And we saw when we removed it that, that in fact, that is possible. So let's, uh, let's take a look at it. Let's Let's restore that file. Let's add it here. The standard default layout file in Rails is application.html.erb. So, so what we can do is, is cut this content. Actually, we want the body too. Here we go. Everything down to the body. And then the part at the end too. So you can see this is where the content will go in, in between the body tags. Let's move this over. And let's eliminate that stuff from the other templates. We don't need this anymore. And here we've got the about page. Okay, let's take a look at this. Great, so now our tests are passing, which shows that we've successfully refactored this application in such a way that we're now using the, uh, the application layout without changing the titles. All of the, the tests are still passing. But you may have noticed a problem. <laughs> if you look at this, at this layout, there's nothing in the body area. And in fact, if you now go to the web page, uh oh, <laughs> it actually doesn't have anything. So in this case, it turns out our tests aren't actually testing everything. Um, in, in the case of the book, uh, we 
sort of did everything at once and added in the, the right code for the layout. Um, but this is one of the nice things I can do in a screencast is show you something a little further afield. In this case, we're going to write a test that actually makes sure that the body isn't empty. So if we look at the code of, uh, of this thing, it's, it's, there's just an empty body here. It's not actually empty. It's really just white space. So it would be really nice to have a test that makes sure that the body isn't white space. So let's, let's look at, uh, at this template. We want a way to detect that this body is not white space. Now, in, in this case over here, we were using have selector. And I don't know how to do this with have selector. As far as I know, there's no way to, to do this. With have tag, there was a way to do it. But in this case, what we need to do is actually get the rendered text for the page and somehow tell that that page does not have um, blank body text. So the way to do that is to say it should ha have a non-blank blank body. So we're going to get, oops, <laughs> boy, my fingers sure want to type get, don't they? It's an occupational hazard. Get home. And now we want a, a, a test line that says that the response results, like the, the, the text resulting from the response, should not match a non-blank body. And so there is a hint there. If you've ever used regular expressions, you know that that is the tool we're going to use here. We're going to say response. Now this is a little confusing dot body dot body this is not actually what's inside the body tag this body is the whole thing I'm sorry about that but that's just the way it goes response dot body dot should not this is the way to do a, a negative condition or test a negative condition in our spec should not match and this is the equals tilde operator that will warm the hearts of all the Perl programmers in the audience this is exactly the same as Perl should not match and then we'll, we're going to use a regular expression, which is a way of max, uh, matching things in text. So we want a regular expression that matches body tags with empty content or blank content. And then if the response.body doesn't match that, then that means that we've succeeded in, in testing this condition. So let's take a look at an essential piece of software for, uh, for doing this kind of test, which is Rubular. Anytime you do regular expressions, you should first go to Ruby there. It's an awesome Ruby regular expression editor. And you can see it has a place where you can put in your regular expression and then a test string. And it's also awesome that it has this, uh, this reference down here. It's really, really useful. So let's think about the test, the things we want to match. We want to match bodies that have b uh, blank or empty content. So let's start with a body tag that is truly empty. We, we certainly want to match this. And so we can make a regular expression that matches that. And now I'm going to use a slash, and you'll see Ruby that will complain. Forward slashes must be escaped. So they're escaped by backslashes. So this is actually backslash slash body. And you can see that this regular expression matches something that's truly blank. But that's not what we have in this case. We have body that then has a couple it has a couple new lines and it has some spaces and then it has a closing tag that's what that's what this is here right in here and so what we want to do is match open body tag close body tag and inside in in between here we want it to match either nothing or some amount of white space and as you look down here in the quick reference we can see that backslash s is the regular expression syntax for any white space character. And or in order to match zero or more white spaces, we need to use the syntax of, of an asterisk. So backslash s asterisk inside here should match both of these guys. Backslash s asterisk does indeed match both of these. So this expression will match the condition that's currently causing our test suite to be read. So I just copied that regular expression from Rubular, and here it is. So 
it should have a non-blank body. If we get home, the response.body should not match open body tag um, empty stuff or you know, white space and closed body tag. As, and as you could see, we were still red. So we can fix this by going to our, our uh, application.html.erb file, our site layout, and we can now insert the body. And the way to insert the body is to use embedded Ruby and use the word yield. Now, it's not important at this point to understand why it's the word yield. And in fact, it used to be at content for layout, which made a lot more sense. It sounded like an instance variable that had the content for the layout. But in this case, this is actually related to Ruby blocks. And what we're doing is we're yielding the content of each of these guys, the home file or the about.html.erb file. We're yielding that content to this template. And so what this arranges to do is just insert the content in here right into this space in a template. And so at this point, the test suite should be, uh, should be uh, green. Let's take a look. Let's run it again. And there we go. So seven examples, zero failures. We're, we're now green. And if we look back at the actual web page here, thank you very much, Rubular. You can see that the about page works, contact works, and home works. You'll notice that we only wrote a test here in in the section for get home. We could write the same test in the other two places, contact and about, but because the layout is used for everything on the entire site, we only have to do this one place and it, it covers the general case. And before we leave this layout, there's actually one thing I want to add back in. It was actually in the generated layout that we saw before. This is new in, in Rails 3. There's an, a, an, what's called a meta tag that we really want to have. It's called, it, all you need to do is just put in this one line. This is a, a, a Ruby um, function. It's called CSRF underscore meta underscore tag. So CSRF is a cross-site request forgery. And I, I barely know anything about this. Like I know what you can learn by reading the Wikipedia page on this. But uh, this is why I defer to the wisdom of the people who develop Rails. If you put in this CSRF meta tag, this prevents the particular kind of attack. Uh, that uh, called a cross-site request forgery. So with that, though, we're now done with our static pages. Um, we've we've got titles that change on a per-page basis, and we have this nice uh, this nice layout template, this application.html.erb file that handles the general skeleton, and then each of the individual pages only needs to define the content that varies on that page.